Alexander Vindman speaking to me a little earlier. Now, Afghanistan is facing its coldest winter in a decade, with temperatures plunging to as low as minus 31 degrees Celsius, and even colder in some mountainous areas where families are struggling to survive. According to the country's government, more than 120 people have already died, and the U.N. is warning two-thirds of the population need humanitarian assistance, including clean water and sanitation. But despite everything, the Taliban have have told the BBC they won't lift their ban on female aid workers. Our chief international correspondent, Lise Doucette, reports now from the Salong district of Parwan province in central Afghanistan. A winter wonderland of aching beauty, but brutal. We're traveling through the massives of the Hindu Kush, through the world's second highest road tunnel, the Salang Tunnel, a place of legend. It's an engineering wonder, but a death trap, especially in winter, in avalanches and accidents. The only highway rescue at this spot is Saki Mohammed selling chains for tires in the coldest winter in a decade. Tough stuff in threadbare clothes. It gets so cold, you can't see the road, you can't walk, and the heaters in cars don't work. These are the lives people live here. It's so cold, but he said it's going to get colder still. We've been out just for minutes and our eyebrows are frozen and my face feels it's going to fall off. Imagine if you live day in, day out in conditions like this. This is the only way to reach Saki Mohammed's home. There's no road. Nothing is easy in this life. This is what life is like here. Literally lived on the edge. Even for the littlest, with little cover from this biting cold. A home made of mud with the warmth of a large family. I have heard people died of cold. My kids recently got sick. Some of my animals died. Till now, I haven't heard people died in Salang. Even five-year-old Jamshed helps keep them alive. He tells me how they have to carry water from the river, freezing in the wind and storms. They survive with a traditional stove and twigs. And the sandali. Under this red and gold blanket, charcoal burns. You can taste the fumes in this room. This year, their heating costs soared, just like the rest of the world. No aid agencies have come to help us, not under the last government or the Taliban government. An aid agency did come by this month. This family wasn't seen as needy. Imagine the others. Their oldest daughters didn't go to school. They couldn't afford it. 14-year-old Zainab was the luckiest. She got to go. But then the Taliban shut girls' high schools. Such hard lives in such harsh terrain. Afghan rulers come and go. Nature's power ever present. Please do set in Afghanistan for us. Now, President Biden